Jason, uh, Tim, Tim yeah. and Leo, they are, uh, they are the, the main uh, event uh, of this sponsor rock. They really like, prepare the content and they come all the way from Hong Kong to have this rush So, <laughs> nice to see, and uh, probably you guys have seen me here for a lot. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there, are of, uh, there are a couple of things I want to highlight the most of them. And we have a water prepared at the quarter. Uh, if you do not have one already, we can uh, get set to that. And finally, we will also provide lunch. So uh, whoever is not eating, let me know so that we can, uh, we can buy a sufficient amount of food. So without further ado, let's. Are we ready to go? Yep, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, I will pass that on to David Wilson and he will turn up the shop side and then I'll go in there. Hey guys, very, very nice to meet you all today. So uh, before we start, just one more time uh, on the preparation side, make sure you have set up, everything set up properly, otherwise uh, you cannot get the environment and you cannot build the code. Uh, you basically, all the demos or workshop, uh, you cannot run. Uh, so if you have not set up, please take a photo, uh, because afterwards we will go to other presentations slide. Is it good? Okay, okay then, so... First of all, thank you, uh, YVKL and EduDAO sponsoring and inviting us to be here. Uh, so I'm Wilson, uh, Tim and Leo. Uh, so uh, just a few words about us. So we are Statists. We are the uh, first uh, multi-chain order book DAX. Uh, we are derivatives exchange. And we currently what we are building is offering a, a cross-chain and multi-chain trading uh, solution. Uh, so uh, if you guys are interested, uh, feel free to follow our uh, Twitter. And our beta test is just went live last week. So later on, team will also do our demo on, on our platform after all the coding stuff. So I'll pass the time to Tim, and he will be handling all the uh, demo and all the coding part. OK. So uh, hi, everyone. I'm Tim. So let's start. OK, wait. Oh, OK, wait. One minute. So. Our topic is about low latency trading with Bybit in Rust. So we will cover all keywords here. So basically, we will, intro, we will assume you have almost no experience about Rust, about algo trading. And after this workshop, you can start to build your own the, or the first algo trading board. So in this workshop, we will include three things. Why we choose the Rust? and how to use Rust to start some algo trading. And after that, we will provide you some low latency trading advice. So let's start. So the first question is, why Rust? We can have many other language. And according to this uh, Stack Overflow developer survey, Rust is the seven years the most loved language. And it's also the most wanted technology. And in the crypto world, we know that the two, uh, two of the famous non-UEM chain, Solana, Nia, are all both built in Rust. And we believe that Rust will be more and more important in the crypto world. And then, what is the benefit to use Rust? The, the major advantage of Rust is about the memory safety. Uh, Rust have a very unique design about the memory management system called ownership. It's very unique. I don't think you can find in other language. After the, this ownership systems, we have a very unique uh, property about it. First, Rust don't need the garbage collection like the Java or Python. And it also not allows any dangle, uh, reference and also, it's not allowed the node in Rust. According to the innovator about the, uh, the nodes, node is the billion dollar mistakes. I think all of us, when we're coding in other language, we will use this kind of node or pointer a lot. But when we have or did some stupid uh, mistakes, you need to take many time, or it's almost hard to um, uh, debug this kind of problem. And in so, why we choose Rust is because in the compiler time, it already blocks most of them. You almost can't, uh, you are not able to write this kind of bug because in the compiler, you have a very strict rules and it's got it. So, 
And then it's also about a type safe language. What does it mean is about Rust requires you, it's not a dynamic language. You can't change the type. So when you, in the compiler times, it will force everything is correct. So the, or the only difficulty in for Rust is about you have to pay more words or time in the compiler time when you write code. But after that, the performance of Rust is fascinating. It's almost as fast as C++. And according to their team, they think that the Rust is about, you can think it's about a C++, plus like the memory management system and some type uh, survey, uh, safe and thread safe. And after that, you can build, or that's why the crypto world loves the Rust so much. And this is the why we, the po most programming thing is the most loved and most want language. So, and because I guess most of you might not familiar with Rust, so here is my own setup. And I su really su uh, suggest you, you guys can install this kind, use the VS Code and install this kind of extension here. Uh, all the links are in there. Yeah. You just go to the recommend uh, section and just download everything. Yeah. With this kind of extension, it will make your life way easier. Yeah. So, and I'm not sure, do you guys have some experience about the algo trading? So here's the three very basic or you almost, uh, it's almost necessary for you to write an algo trading script in Rust. First one is the Tokyo package. It's the async library in Rust. I think almost the async stuff in Rust is depends on the Tokyo. And second is the HTTP clients. And it's help you to send the HTTP request to the, uh, the server or the exchange to post your uh, order and or get the information actively. And the last package you want is the WebSockets package. So we are so, and uh, actually I, I add this kind of package into the dependency so you can use it just build your uh, uh, Rust code. So, okay, now I guess we have some basic understanding about Rust. So we will, after we introduce about some basic information about algo shading, we can, we will start do some coding and get the information in the Bybit engine. So, the, and I think, um, I, I have to make sure everyone has uh, registered the Bybit testing and uh, uh, testnet accounts. Please use the testnet accounts. Uh, we, we won't pay you if you use your own account, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. And for the Bybit, uh, if you want to use the algo trading, you have to create your API key. And they require you uh, set up the 2FA before you install the, two, uh, the API key. And the last thing is you have to ready the, you should, you should get the API DOS before you code them. Uh, in this workshop, we won't include all the uh, API function for you. We will just list something that I think you need it. For the remaining thing, you can find the API DOS and just can change a bit cooks, you can get what you want. So, okay. Uh, oh, I will talk about uh, uh, just a few words about uh, what kind of or technique or do you need in for algo trading. You need to know the REST API, how to post the HTTP request to the engine and how to decode the HTTP request and get the what you want. And for the REST API, it's a kind of the active action. You will ask the engine to get what you want or do your action. But this, it, it, uh, actually every exchange has kind of caused the race limit. You can't do it unlimited. I've, I have checked the dot is about, for Bybit server, you only allows to do 50 requests per two minutes. So if you want to do the real low latency or high frequency trading, they're probably not enough for you. So you have two ways to solve it. 
first. And go to their server. If you pass certain constraint like you post 2,000 order per day, and I guess a few 0.01% of order, and or contribute some uh, liquidity to them, you can ask them to re-increase your race limit. But we, uh, because I assume you guys may not have too much experience and may not be able to do this kind of the ingress uh, race limit stuff, so uh, we will use the WebSocket. WebSocket is a kind of the passive way to get the information. Basically, you can just connect to the engine and the engine will give you the data, for example. When you subscribe the Chase channel, you will receive every Chase message. Then you, uh, it will just pass to your uh, machines. And after you realize the organize it, decode it, and get light, or maybe or you can fire via algo to analyze it, you can know how to process the data and post your order to do your algo trading. So basically, you, you have to know the web API stuff and the web sockets. So now we can start the first trading. Oh, 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 I forgot one thing. I should demonstrate how to get the API key. So can you see? Oh. OK, so please be careful. You should go to this test net. We, we take no response if you do it in the mainnet, OK? So go to the test net. I, ask, I assume you guys have the test, uh, test net account already. And you set up the 2FA stuff. So we, uh, at this moment, we can create our new key. And in this demonstration, actually, you have to write the permission for the key. And for this workshop, I think you can just click the permi all permissions and disable the wallet free. Be uh, actually, you can include it, but you have to a uh, bit where it's not really useful in this workshop. So you should create a key, and at least you can you should paste the order, and we will use the spot as the example. So and after oh, it's a demo. And OK, I will create a key. I think everyone can create a key here. So API of the key power. So after you enter your 2FA, pass it you will get your key information. So in this case, it will show your API key and the uh, secret. Please remember is your secrets will not able to access, uh, or you, you can't see the, get the secrets again after you click this understood. So and for the security, you don't let anyone to know your secret. That's why it costs secret, right? <laughs> okay, so like, so we can copy here. Uh, okay, maybe we, I, we can place. Oh, can you uh, assess the code here? So, um, after you get your API keys, please go to this uh, con REST connector under the SCRL file here. So, and when you enter here, please pass your key here. But actually, I have uh, to warn you, never do this thing uh, in your real, uh, real trader, uh, your real code. It's a very best example, actually, because but it's easy to do. Uh, actually, you should place your key to other place, like uh, environment variable or something else. And never do this code and uh, write your key and sequence in your code here. It is just a demo and test, so I just do it here. Because when, or maybe you, you have to push, push your code to Git or something, the other guys can get your key and secret and do and use your accounts wherever they want. It's, so never do it in the real code. 
but this uh, rest of so yeah. So at this moment, you create your own API key, and you can start to the. As actually at this moment, you can just really post your order by code by Rust or something. And because I'm not sure, do you guys understand the Rust? So I will have a very brief introduction about some basic syntax that you might need in this workshop. So, and okay. So for Rust, when you when we want to uh, create a variable, we will use the keyword let and x. And Rust is just like I mentioned before. Rust is a type uh, safe uh, language, so you you. You should uh, write the, your uh, the type for your variable here. For example, it's thirty-two. U thirty-two is means the unsized integer with thirty-two bits. And Rust is really care about the type. So actually, it supports like U thirty-two, U sixty-four, and U one hundred and thirty, one hundred and thirty-x. So you have to choose your uh, the type wisely, and also the Rust is say uh, really care about the type, so you can do something like this. Uh, for example, I want to do a flow thirty two, f f thirty two. So I want to do something like this, and it's save. It will it will have the al al uh, the error code for you, because. Rust will never convert your uh, variable. In this case, one is an integer. It won't convert to the flow point to you. So you have to do like 1.0 or just one point something. And the last thing you might need to know is about the string. And uh, what is inconvenient when you do the coding, but you will after you go through this whole learning curve, you will have very good understanding or you will very familiar how to work with it. So it's actually it will improve your coding skill in other language, I believe. So here is something that we will use in Rust for uh, define a variable with the string, call the string and from. It's kind of, it's a bit similar in the C++. So I guess we have included some basic uh, information for the Rust syntax. And the remaining thing, if you want to learn more, here is a web that I really suggest and uh, recommend for you. It actually includes everything and is really well code, uh, well right here. It's called the Rust book. You can just go go Rust book and you can get it. So we can really got to start the how we can access the thing to the Barbie server. So please go to here. The example, our first example, HTTP GET request. So uh, I already write some basic stuff for you, so you don't need to worry about it. And uh, so we will go to the part one, the simple GET request. Start go talk card anymore. Okay, so uh, before you start, uh, we have to start the talk. Uh, so please go to the. Uh, okay. So please go to the GitHub. Uh, where is? Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, anyway, just go to the GitHub repo, and then at the last section, there was a a, a line that uh, said during uh, workshop something like that, and there is a, a sample code that asks you to start the Docker, and please start it within the directory, and then uh, you can you will be able to run the code. Sorry for a moment.
，好似唔好去。成日都 save 唔到條 link 過去，佢 pass 唔到過去啦，依家。我唔到，真係。得啦得啦得啦。OK。呢度。咁多。Why make it create this all? Allow the permission to all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just disable the wallet stuff. Okay, okay. And you, you, you got all one. Okay, just copy this line, the Docker run, blah blah blah, and run it in the terminal, uh, within your directory, and then you will be able later on when we compile the code, then you will be able to run it, and. This line also means that uh, we attach your file system uh, within the source, the source code that you download early on into the Docker. So when you edit the code in the in the your current uh, PC or Mac, and then all the code will be uh, updated in, within the Docker. So you don't have to worry to send the all the stuff back to the Docker. And I will let uh, if everyone is good, then maybe we can move forward. So any if one is okay with that. Okay, then then we move on. Okay. Okay, so let's get back to here, the code here. So, and now I will teach you how to use Rust to connect the Baby server and get the API you want. So the first thing you have to do is go to the Baby API dot of course, and for example, when I let me just see. Well, I want to get the some take uh, twenty four hours. For example, when we want to get some API here, then we should find this path and the method here. Then, actually, I write the template for you, so you can just simply uh, input the path here. And let's check this. And here you can see is the uh, the requirement or the thing you want to filter out. And after that, you will receive the uh, response from the Baby server. So I already wrote some here as a template. And when you want to use this kind of template to get other requests, you can just for example, like go to the another request you want. For example, maybe I want to go to the audible. Then I will check this path. It's like also I get, and this is the you are at the path. Then you can just replace here. Or it's just like for example in this case a crow dev. Then you should paste crow dev in your code here. And check the the parameter maybe you want to filter out. For example, when I want to do, uh, get the Bitcoin USDT uh, audible, then I know that the symbol is uh, required. So we have to uh, in add the symbol here. So what will we get after we run the code? Oh, maybe I can introduce this for you. For Rust, we will use the cargo for in the keyword in the terminal. And when you want to run the clocks, and because I wrote this uh, source code, uh, with, as a library or package or quite, whatever you want, you name it. So we will run this kind of code in the example directory here. So here is what we will use, cargo run. Example and the final name. Okay. Cargo run. At oh 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 yeah oh yeah yeah oh sorry. Then the compiler will and will run your codes here. For example, uh, I use. I, I want to get the taker 24 hours data in, uh, for the Bitcoin's USDT products. 
And after I get, uh, you will receive the data. And how do we understand the data? You can go to the, uh, the their API dots to find it out. It will have a very detailed data for you, and you can check the data here to compare. For example, for this moment, uh, I'm not sure what is L here, so you can check here is the lower price in this ticker. And actually, we can do a, a almost all get here, this keyword, get for this kind of method. So maybe we can try another language or any other API for you. For example, when we got, want to got the, all the books, then we know it's uh, public crow dev, then we can copy and paste in the code. Oh, this time I wonder if you. Uh, then we can compile it. So now we can get the Ethereum order book now. So okay, I guess we can know how to use the get method in the Rust now, and you can just use this kind of the template to do it. The next thing, and when we do the algo trading, sequential request is we don't want to do it because it's really slow. What does it mean like, uh, because the method is sequential is when you finish A and then we start B and then step C. It's, and when we use the HTTP request, you have to wait a lot of time. You send the request to their server and need to wait that until they receive the message. Usually it will may take at least 10 or hundreds uh, milliseconds. And in the low latency or, or the high frequency chainings, it's really very bad. You, you, you are just waiting your time and can't really slow your thing. So I have, actually this kind of template is implies the concurrency idea. Concurrency means that you, you just like the example I just told you, you start A, after you, finish A, then you start B. After you've got the B, you will start C. What does con uh, concurrency means? I start A, and I will all automatically start B until I get the response from A. Then we will process the A stuff. So I can ask the, for example, when I want to access some data from the BIP server, I will lay, for example, ten, send 10 requests to the BIP server. I don't need to waste every data batch to do the next request. I will send 10 at the same time. And after I receive all 10, then we can do the other thing else. So actually, at this example, we will, you will see this kind of the keyword await and the Tokyo. Tokyo is the package I mentioned before. It's about uh, implies the asynchronized idea or the concurrency idea for this kind of code. So you can see the follow example. I will also want to get two requests, but this time I will don't waste the first request or the second request. Like the first example, I will send the request and then waste and decode the data. But in reality, when we use the concurrency idea, we will just send the data. We, we don't need to waste it. We will ask the Rust, to join this request together. Then we will wait until we got everything else. And in practice, it will at least fast few times. So actually, I think it's something that you must know when you do your algo trading. So yeah. So let's try it. Or oh, just maybe I can comment out the first part. Find this good. Yeah. Oh. Oh.
Carrier. Oh no, that was a mistake. Connect the way. The safe and move is for only. Sorry? The mount only includes the source, not examples. What do you mean? You mean this variable? Between the examples. For a Wi Fi, let me. Because the... Uh, sorry, sorry. This amount is not the same. You, you, you pick the doctor? Oh, no, he is not using the doctor. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, my own file. It seems like the internet has some problem. Monday. Um, uh, because yesterday we don't know the Malaysia is, it's hard to access the Bible server, so... We yeah. might have some yeah. nervous yeah. issue here. <laughs> yeah. We, so I, I wrote it before I know it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I hope you guys have find your own way to assess it. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, whatever. So actually it's kind of the same idea. We will use the async method in the following Cook so so let just let it go. So at this moment, we know how to use the Rust to get the data from the server. But the key thing we want to do is actually is pasting the order to the Bible to get your real algo trading, not just receive the data, right? And I already do this the authentication part for you in this uh, source code here. So if you are interested, then you can check here how to, uh, how to handle the authentication path for Rust. And, but in this workshop, I think we don't have too much time to cover all the things to how to reprocess the, your, how to handle your, uh, use your API key and SQL to generate the signature for authentication. So we just can use it. And so the next thing here is we will use, go to the post order here. So I, I have raised the function for you, so it's easy to use. I, I suggest you can, if you want to build your own, uh, really real algo trading, you should implement by yourself. And, but you can like use, it, use my code as an example here. So, for example, in this moment, we, I want to post an order for the beacons and the, some, the, oh, here's something I have to tell you. This some stuff. Uh, uh, I hope all, all you know what is the limit order and market order. Limit order is, uh, you, you in, in, uh, input the price for the limit order and you will paste at the, that price. The market order is just get, uh, you will match in the order book to get the best price. So for the market order, you don't need the, uh, need to input the price. For Rust, it, as I mentioned before, it don't, it, we don't have the null idea in this case. So how can we choose to, sometimes we will pass the price into code, but sometimes we don't. We will use something called, called sum. It's an en, uh, enums fun, uh, stuff. When, when you have the price here, it will tell the machine, hey, this is you, you can find the price in this stuff. But what if this known? Then it will not pass it. For example, as not. Uh, no. 
，谁让我冇叫 keyword？ 弄唔到啊！我少 ，I haven't forgot。唔係好記得喎，我幫你睇下。我成日都係冇用啦，我有有少冇用到。啊，我得啊，所以誒 ，I will cover it later。啊，算啦，我有陣時 post 佢喺度啦。And for example, we can run this example. 之後呢，係 post order。And we can go to the Spot market. I post. I and we use the spot as the example. <laughs> uh, we have some never problem here. <laughs> Let me try to reconnect it. <laughs> Go over high connect all. What a job! Oh yeah, we are bad. <laughs> Terminal cop. Now you can see the order is entered the uh, Barbie server. You can check the is a really limit by size the price and the thing you want. So, at this moment, congratulations! You can already post order and get the information from the Rust API server. And for the similar things, I will I have rose the cancel order with without some like the. Oh, this way kind of similar to the uh, the get APIs part, but it's kind of the post stuff. So, oh my, what you say, your wife? So, and when we write uh, uh, run this kind of code, then it will post your order and cancel. So you can now how to control your order in your own code, and. Have I faced here? Or maybe you can try, at this moment you can try a bit here. So if you have any question, maybe you can uh, ask us, and maybe you can just pay, try to play some order and play around with it. What board? Your time. That's a now thing. Look how you're more data. I know at the moment. Why? Why not have a language server? It's Murasa, I think. You see Murasa? Oh. I'm not sure if it's a Murasa. I'm not sure if it's a Murasa. Yeah, I know. No. Why not? Why not? Okay, I changed. Ah, uh, I did some silly thing here. And so this is how we paste the market order. You just use the type and just are not. I I confused with something else. Sorry. So can everyone post some order in the Rust server? Sorry. Oh. So, and you can see the cancel order example here. So, 
So, so any question or everyone is good? So if it's much broader, can you specify like stipulation? Sorry? Okay, so since this is our book, there is no secret. It's not like uh, AMM type of thing. You just yeah. mentioned, uh, unless you use much broader, uh, then, then if you use much broader, and so also for, and we can't control everything here so you have to check the api dot to see how much parameter you can add in the request and you can just do the similar thing here let's start the post order yeah so you can find here the post order stuff and see what you can add and but However, you have to modify my code a bit. My function may not support this, and you can, you can like, change a bit, then you can add the parameter you want. Yeah. So I guess everyone is okay then. We can go to the next step. Uh, oh, maybe just let me... So we, after that, we can apply the concurrency idea also for the post order. And before we, at least in Hong Kong, I used the, my own Mac to connect the big IP server. With, and without, without the concurrency, the late, I need like 100 milliseconds to paste an order, which is quite slow. But after I impose the concurrency, like for when I post free order, the latency is still 100 milliseconds that we can't do anything. But the total time for post free order will decrease from like 300 milliseconds to like 150 or 120. It can drop a little, a way more. So that's why I call it almost necessary for you. And I think I wrote the, so, yeah. In this example, we will post like total free order with the other some uh, parameter and your everything can change. Then, so I'm doing that part. Oh, maybe it's not fast enough. Okay, yes. And we will use the handler. It's kind of how we join all the data. And in this kind of example, uh, after we uh, prepare the order we want to post, and then we will use a vector to contain all of them. We will ask the Rust to do its con concurrency. Then, after this cost, and we at the Rust we receive all the data here, or the final data. But actually, at this moment, the order is already entered the BIP server, and the remaining stuff is how you process or check the data and all the status. Like, have you posted or what is the order ID after you post it? So, and the third part, I I think a small uh, comparison between the sequence. Uh, sequential logic and the concurrency things. I hope I can run this here to show you why we must got the concurrency stuff. I don't see one window. <laughs> Let's see how can we do it. Okay, you can see. I post 10 order. For the sequential parts, the, it takes about five seconds. And for the, uh, for the concurrency methods, I only just takes 1600 milliseconds. And by the way, I'm using VPNs, I think it's Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah, it's Tokyo. It's, and if you can use some I will cover this co-location co thing stuff later for how we actually achieve the low latency. When you all finish everything, you can minimize your request time is about like 
10 milliseconds. If you do everything well, you can minimize to yeah, six and the really like process time you get eight, yeah, many so seconds. Work, but didn't come for that, you can even more. Yeah. So after this uh, the workshop, I believe you can place your order with like under 10 milliseconds. If you want to do a bit better, then you have to pay a lot for you have to pay other costs. So this is the best way and simplest way to get uh we, I think it's almost good enough for you to do the latency stuff. So at this moment, we cover how to get the information from the Bybee server, how to post the order, and how to apply the concurrency to minimize the whole times. It can earn the time for you to, when you build your own algo shading like the analysis pass, then for example, in this case, you just save four seconds to you to do some kind of analysis. But actually, I don't think your algo should be complicated. Then we can go to the next step. It's about we can apply the WebSocket here. So for the WebSockets, we can here's some ideas for you to how to you display that as you see. And similarly, you should apply and add your key and secrets here so you can connect to your private web sockets. Uh, I think it happens to most of exchange there. It has two kinds of the web sockets. One is private, one is public. For the public uh, web socket, you will usually get the data from Others like, for example, when someone chase, it will have a take care or a chase message and enter your machine. And in this case, sometimes we won't only care about what we did in the exchange. Like, have my money enter the exchange? Have my orders match? Or have my order enter the uh, Barbie server? So in this times, we will need the private WebSocket stuff. And here we, I will tell you how to use this package and how to inject your key and secrets to start your uh, WebSocket. And in the following example here, we will use, uh, uh, how I say, oh, because when we, in the real case, when we use the WebSocket, we may have a tons of different kinds of message that I mentioned. It might be about your account or chain or something. And you might do, want to do different action to different message. So I, I wrote an example for you. It's really dumb example, but it can illustrate what I want to say. When this example, it will mention that when you receive a, some kind of private message, then you will just post another order here. And when we when the WebSocket receive uh, like the ping message and pull message or the, some account information and just pins it out. So and after that we will start before we enter these steps, you just construct your WebSocket, but you haven't applied it. Then when we do this looping stuff, it will continue to run your WebSockets uh, program. And it will follow this kind of rule. When, we, when the WebSocket receives oh, the first thing, execution message, it will post a dumb, uh, a stupid order here. And it will, and we receive the tech cat, it's just pin it out. And you can start to build your own algo or your own strategy here. And so let's try something here. Okay, I have to input my.
I post too much order here. Message. Okay, here is the thing. And I already call, uh, run these examples. You can see that it will uh, displace the web socket message you need. And, and for the detail about the message, you can just check the API doc. And like here, we can go to the WebSocket part. You will know what kind of message you can get and what which channel do you need here. So, so you can receive your WebSocket message and you can think your own strategy about how to handle it. Like for example, I also write a quite simple algo here I, I can promise you it will lose all your money if you really use it. Uh, it's for the similar idea like it will receive the public message here and when it receives like it will compare, uh, let me see. When the last price is larger than your, the previous price, just uh, you will mark it or the price is going up and when it receives five continuous uh, up message, you will post another order. When you receive five decreasing uh, side, you will post another side of order. It's a price uh, really stupid idea about, or not a stupid idea, it's a price the uh, momentum trading idea, but with a very stupid implementation. But actually, we can then do something like this. And at this moment, you, can, you already can able to build your own algo trading stuff. And let me do some conclusion about at this moment. First, uh, you know how to use your get or the RESTful API stuff by get and post order. And then because uh, uh, the every exchange has the race limit, you can't always get what you want at uh, unlimited. So we will apply the WebSocket to receive the message passively. And we will use this kind of the idea to handle how when the serve uh, WebSocket, how we process the different kinds of message. Like the example, this one is when we when it receives the execution message, it will post an order. And after we have this WebSocket stuff, we can start build your own algo trading machine. Okay, any question here or? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Oh, and actually, uh, for actually, it's a part also to the public uh, the RESTful API. Public message or public stuff is about your own account. For example, when you post an order, private. Yeah, private is your own stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, okay, sorry. Private message or private API is all about your own account. For example, you post an order, you will receive it in the private mess uh, restaurant. When someone other, someone else posts order and match, then you will receive a message from public restaurant. So yeah, depends on your strategy. You might probably use the public uh, restaurant to receive external information and do the analysis. And after that, you can use your private API to control. For example, is my order well placed and any kind of the monitor stuff? Okay. Yeah. Or any question about how to build your own uh, algo trading spot? 
So if no, then we can move on. My A is all high. Then we can start talking about uh, sorry. Low latency trading. Before we start here, we just are uh, use kind of the normal uh, stuff like how can we or uh, or just or ju uh, just simple. It's quite slow. Like I mentioned, I, when I post an order like in the Tokyo to the uh, the Bybit server, it could take about five hundred milliseconds. And when we all know that the uh, uh, the exchange is there's tons of order and it will change up very much if almost every second or every hundred sec milliseconds. When you receive your information and when you really, after you do the process, the data, do your own analysis and post your own well-designed order, it already passed some time. And the market or, or maybe already changed. Then you, your analysis may be not really meaningful at this moment. So that's why we want to do the low latency. And after you, re, uh, you achieve the low latency, and the, or the major uh, strategy for the low latency trading is called Arbitrum. Uh, Arbitrum. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. Arbitrum. Uh, what does Arbitrum mean if uh, for the two products have some or we, uh, we can use the Bybit as an example. And for the Bybit here, spot market, you can see the BTC USDT price is about 90.5K. And when you can chest like the... Oh, thank you, thank you. So when you uh, maybe I'll go to the perpetual contract, the price is about small de deviation. But remember, this kind of deviation is not is positive correlated, but not necessarily. Uh, it doesn't apply to you, uh, or in this way, this price difference is include many different factor. So you can't just say, oh, this apply this one, then I can do the arbitrage. This is not guarantee you win the money. But it will have a very strong uh, correlation be between them. So when you think this, the price difference maybe is large and you have checked other factors like the funding stuff, you, you show us the price difference is larger than other factors, then you can start to do your arbitrage. So basically, your script is kind of like we use the WebSocket to monitor to price, and the price difference is larger than a certain amount. And you, after you consider other factor, you can add a coefficient or variable here, and it triggers it, then it will automatically post an arbitrary order in other size. Then, and when for some good arbitrary scripts, the risk can way really minimize. So the only question is about uh, the, your speed. If you're fast enough, there's a more opportunity for you to do it, the arbitrage. Uh, okay. And the second thing is about uh, the limit order stuff. We know the uh, order fee have, have a very big difference between the limit order and market order. And when you think the price is going up, and you won't really get some orders, then if you use the market order, you may need to pay more fee. But if your machine is fast enough and your observes are growing a chain, you may pay can, uh, limit orders a bit better than best price. Then you, or because your order is fast than others, your order have a relative higher chance to get match before others, other guys order. Which means that your limit order may have a a bit higher chance to get match. In other ways, you are paying lower fee for it. And I know there are other kind of strategy you can apply like 
uh, momentum trading or some it's about some liquidity stuff. But you have to check some kind of the policy or the stuff about the different exchange. Yeah. So we know the low latency trading has its own advantage. So how can we do it? And basically it's about some free stuff. And the hardware stuff is, I, I believe hardware can cost you the most. And it's hard to improve at the very, at, in a short time. You have to pay some uh, cost or to do it. But if the other stuff is maybe uh, cheaper or easier for you to achieve. The first thing is, or the majority cost for uh, the latency is come from the network. And uh, because of speed of light, is no way to minimize to zero. If your machine has some distance uh, to the RB uh, server, there must some uh, latency. For example, my machine is Tokyo now, so my VPN is Tokyo. So it have to pass the few thousands uh, distance to get into the baby server. So if I did everything well, I can't minimize the request to like 400 milliseconds. It's some uh, geological limitation. And you have to achieve this, and we will use the concept of the co-locations. Uh, co co I think Wilson will present me, us more about it later. And the second thing is about the programming. If you choose your some slow language like the Python, uh, I, I, I did some ex, uh, ex, experiments a few days ago, and the Python actually is at least were, uh, slow like at least 20 or 30 percent to Rust because some uh, the feature about the language, you should choose a fast language. And that's why we need Rust. And we have taught tons of other advantage about Rust. It's really fast. It is memory safe, so you can think it's really stable. And it's flash safe, so you can do some uh, multi uh, parallel or concurrency and anything step. So when you use Rust, congratulations, you already do your first uh, correct answer. And then you should Simplifies your algo trading strategy. For example, when I receive the data, I, I, I'm super intelligent. I have a very good uh, strategy. I, but I have to take like do some AI or something that it costs like one hour. Every opportunity is gone. The price is changed and your analysis is almost useless. So when we apply the high frequency or the low latency stuff, you must make sure your algo is not too complicated. I mean, you can already guess very fast, like the co-location stuff. You can minimize your speed like to few milliseconds, but you, you use like two seconds to analyze the data. It's totally meaningless. So make your algo, uh, your algo simple. That's why the, most of the people will do the arbitrage. The arbitrage doesn't require too much difficult strategy or analysis. Or other ways, you just make the, your algo simple and efficiency. With the communication, you can build a good algo trading. So, I'm like, okay. Now, Wilson will explain more about the co-location stuff. Okay, so before that, I, I want to add a few words on, on the Python experiment that uh, Tim run. Uh, so what, what he mentioned about the 20% or 30% lower, it means for posting order only. It doesn't include any calculation. If you're running statistic in Python, you know uh, it, it takes ages to compare. So um, if you're doing the same uh, algo analysis or like statistic uh, arbitrage, then it may go up to 10 times slower. So that's why we, we highly recommend you use uh, like very strong type or like uh, uh, language like Rust or other. If you're very good, you, you someone use Fortran, you, people make money with it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I, like uh, investment bank, they in, in traditional finance, they use this sort of stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, so let, let's talk about co-location. So co-location is just meaning how close can you put your server 
next to the trading platform. Uh, unlike uh, traditional finance like NASDAQ, you have to rent uh, a space, a sh uh, sh uh, server space, it costs um, a million plus USD a year. But in crypto, it's, it's very fair. Uh, everyone, most likely, uh, some exchange put build their own servers, but that, that's another story. But uh, most of the major exchange are on AWS. So you just have to check where they are. And it's very nice that Bybit give out their location. It's at uh, APSE1 dash a is at three. I will explain a bit. Uh, so so A A P S E one is a region code. Maybe I just uh, if you forgot this one, you can just get it here in the public API log. And I think it's like the FAQ. So after this workshop and you want to find it, you can get into the API bot to get the uh, uh, this stuff. Okay, so A P S E one means it is a region code, that means uh it's in Singapore. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, Binance Server is in Tokyo right now. Uh, FTX, I believe, they are in Tokyo. Uh, so, uh, for some reason, Bybit put their uh, service in Singapore. And Bitmax, I believe, is in somewhere in Europe. Uh, so, uh, this depends. And the A is F3 means that uh, availability zone free. So, within a region uh, such as Singapore, there are multiple data centers located at different uh, places. So that means uh, a, you, you have to pick the, the correct one. So let, let us give some, okay. okay, so this is just a simple diagram saying, okay, so within a region, there is a uh, sub, sub uh, region that is make sure uh, you pick the correct one. And actually, even within our availability zone, you can break into even uh, lower scale, but uh, that, that part is quite complicated and I, I will not uh, cover it right now. Uh, so just uh, some simple testing. Uh, so this is a uh, few servers we place uh, at 1A, 1B, and 1C. Uh, 1C is where uh, by be at, and 1A and 1B is uh, the other zone. So just by even within Singapore, uh, within uh, like few blocks away, you already get 40% plus increase in, in time. So this is huge. Uh, just imagine uh, the, the latency you are getting is a, a normal distribution. Uh, so the, normally the, the standard deviation of that distribution is around 1 ms. So 40% uh, away uh, means that you are like uh, four, four standard deviation away, meaning you, 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 you will lose. You know, basically, you cannot get fast enough. So why, why we uh, always mention about why, why we need speed is because in high frequency or low latency stuff, you, you are placing a small amount of order. You just do it multiple times or thousands of times uh, in an hour. And ju you're just shaving a little bit, a little bit of profit. But you accumulate a lot. Like over time, then you, you can make a lot of money. And just that's, that's why speed is so, so important. Uh, but, but we cannot uh, run the benchmark here because of the networking issue. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, yeah, but we so. know Tokyo is about 500 milliseconds. So no, no, the 500 is from here to Tokyo and back, yeah. back to Singapore. And back to Singapore and pass the whole stand back. So if you use this kind of, you must lose everything. Yeah, and unless you do statistical arbitrage, yeah. meaning you guess what will happen in, in maybe five minutes later. Then, uh, then that's kind of trading, then it's allow you you have more uh, computational time. And, but but for, for that kind of strategy, you, you have to take more risk because market changes and you have to switch algo. Uh, but for high high frequency stuff, uh, like actually it's is low low latency. High frequency is also mean uh, you you take a trade in a few minutes. Uh, that that kind of matter. Or some sometimes people do few days. Uh, but but low latency mean just just in a millisecond range. Uh, for that kind of stuff, uh, you you really have to be very very fast. Yep. So I guess this conclude our presentation. Uh, maybe we can uh, open up the floor for Q and A. Uh, yes. How do they calculate the trading fee? So many of them. Sorry? How do they calculate the trading fee? Do they have a commission on your trading fee? You mean how much we pay when we. When we can? Okay, so maybe we can open the pricing structure. Yeah. Uh, Thank <laughs> you.
so this is a, a simple fee, fee structure that uh, you get. It depends on volume, how much you trade. The more you trade, the, the cheaper you get. Uh, for what team mentioned about uh, maker and taker side, it means uh, if you're putting order on the order board, waiting someone to match you, then this is a maker order. That means you put liquidity. A exchanges actually encourage uh, algo trader to do so. That's why they, they put a much lower fee on, on maker side. Uh, and like on the perpetual trading, it's like almost six times difference. So one basis point versus six basis point. You get a lot cheaper if you are doing uh, maker. When you use the algo trading, we suggest you almost use the limit order. It's, it's really hard to compete the price when you like to, just like Bruce mentioned, you will post like thousands of orders a day. It's really hard to comp uh, compare it. So you should place an order and probably you will keep holding so a lot of losses. That's why I include the cancel orders caught in the uh, demonstration. Yeah, for example, if you are doing arbitrage, that means each trade you are maybe earning one, one tech. That means if, for example, in, in BTC, that's, is, that's one, one cent per tech or one, one, uh, 10 cents per tech. That means uh, the, the fee is really important. So just be aware of that. Yes. Uh, I got a question for uh, the show runs. Uh, so, you're using Tokyo. Uh, they said that we got Rayon. Uh, do you know what's the difference between Tokyo and Rayon? Actually, I use Tokyo. I only use the Tokyo, so I can't be asked for this. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. What would be the ideal part of the Rayon? You mean in real world? Uh, ideally? Yeah. Uh, in, in crypto or in Chefry? Uh, okay then. Uh, okay, so I, I can show something. That, that's a good question. Uh, so let's dig deeper on what AWS can offer uh, for the machine. Instant type. Yep. Okay, actually, AWS offer like uh, almost more than 100 type of instances. Uh, uh, Mac, there's T4G, T3, T3A, T2, blah, blah, blah. Um, so just, okay. So one keyword you should look at is network optimized. So it will label at something, something N. If it has an N in it, that means it has a much more stable network equipment attached to the machine. Uh, so for example, uh, M5N and M5ZN, uh, the EZ uh, stand for you, you get a much more powerful CPU. That is also something you should aim for um, because we, right now we are talking about speed uh, and, and you, you don't mind paying a little, it's like 20% higher in, in your, your, your AWS cost, uh, but you, you gain much more speed. And so that is something you should look for. And as well, as uh, if you need to run uh, some some sort of uh, algos, uh, like like very complicated one, you may need a, a GPU accelerated processor. Then you should go for like GPU optimized device, uh, like some some. Uh, okay. uh, yep, accelerated computing. Then you you get. Uh, even if you know FPGA stuff, you can you can also run FPGA stuff there. Uh, but that, that is for like very high high loading computing. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay. As for for AWS uh, machine, just remember as long as you are not renting something called metal. Uh, let's see. Okay. So in in a one class of machine, there is still different breakdown. So uh, large means that, okay, let, let's look at metal, it's much easier. Metal meaning you, 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 you're renting the whole machine. You're getting all the, uh, you don't have to share with anyone. And if you are willing to pay, this is the best option. Uh, yeah, but, but it's uh, quite expensive uh, when you start. Uh, yeah, and 
for metal, uh, okay, sorry, I will go at it. Yeah. So for metal machine, uh, you don't you even skip the hypervisor. You just directly accessing the the hardware. Uh, a level above that is uh, something starting with dot some a number x large or large uh, that you get a uh, different CPU and and even for for this one you got all the whole machine but you you are blocked by the hypervisor uh, which means a uh, virtual machine that kind of stuff uh, starting from there uh, every step you divide it by two that means uh, this is right now you are sharing with one person and that is three person and then uh, you got uh, how much is it? Three, five. You are sharing with seven person, and, and then all the way down. Uh, the problem is that sometimes you don't know what is your neighbor is doing. If someone is calling a loss of network, that that will cause a jitter. A, a jitter is a term when you measure latency. It's the variation of latency, just like a standard deviation, some sort of stuff. And and then that will be maybe a concern for you. So. My advice is, if you are rich, just go for the, uh, <laughs> the best one. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys actually rent metal together with between four or five charges, so that it can be even better rather than renting each of you renting your home. So renting like large and large, rather four or five combined money together to rent one metal. Uh, then, then it's become do you trust or who are you sharing with? If someone they are competing with latency, uh, uh, that is nasty stuff they can do if you give that full control of your machine. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, and anything else I should talk about other than machine? Uh, ah, okay. So, so and, and there is additional setup you can tune uh, for, for a machine. If you are okay in those two, is that serious? Um, I, I, let, let me go deeper on how, how CPU works. So when Amazon is buying the, the CPU. One of their costs is, uh, is power, right? H how much energy they use. So by default, they turn their uh, CPU clock speed by default to sleeping mode. That's called, called a C state or P state, I forgot. Uh, so for that, if you are starting to do calculation, the CPU have to ramp up the clock speed first before you get the full optimized. So uh, if you are using a ESET, type machine that have a ESET label here, you should check, uh, you should, and you should able to, there's a script you can run to make sure all your CPU clock are running at the fastest speed at by default. Then, then you get yeah, like even shaving few percent latency. So it's, after this is uh, like how to optimize, how to do uh, kernel tuning, uh, other stuff, just to make sure you gain every squeeze of power you can get. Yep. Yeah. Yes. In, a, in a safe way, in the zone, how do you like say make it faster? You said just now you say there's a way to like in a safe way to make it faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there is also one way uh, you can do uh, is that uh, within a available zone, there are maybe 1,000 or 10,000 rack of servers, but you don't know which and where a 5B server actually is. So one way you can do is just because it's very cheap to start a machine and they, they charge per millisecond. They don't charge per second right now. So you can start thousands of machines and try to see which machine get the best ping. Then, then you can, ah, okay, somewhere here. And after you locate that, you can set up uh, something called a customer mode in your AWS account. Then you can tell AWS, okay, just put all the server within this region. Then you get best performance. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, okay, let's check. Uh, uh, pricing, pricing. Let's check, uh, for example, Singapore. Uh, Singapore, Singapore. Mm -hmm. Where are the machine type? Ah, uh, here you go. Uh, let's, for example, uh, M5 set. Uh, that, that's the one I'm uh, currently talking about. Uh, so 
is the on demand is the highest you can pay is uh, almost four USD per hour. Uh, so let, let's convert into how much are you paying per month? Yeah, uh, oh yeah. Uh, 3.9 times 24 times, right? Uh, uh, 2 k Yeah, almost 3K, 2.8K. But this is only the computer. You still have to pay for the network. <laughs> yeah. So network, they charge uh, something, uh, some 10 or 100 cents per gigabyte. Uh, yeah, it's, it really depends how much you use. Uh, but, but since they are, they, they put the server here, basically you force it to put server there. Yeah. Ooh, does it make any difference, let's say, if 5 actually your mic? Uh, I don't know, I don't work with 5 I don't know what they are doing. <laughs> but yeah. will, will it make any difference, let's say, if the provider themselves? Yeah, actually, uh, we have to do it on off record. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobby, can you give a scenario of, let's say, let's um, say last time the market time uh -huh. and how will your algorithm, how will your design algorithm? If you're doing light speed, uh, light low latency average, you don't care how much, the more they move is better to, for you because the market more is okay. Like for example, uh, uh, like if the market certainly is, uh, jumps up or go down, and, and that means, uh, the spot market and the there is very high chance the small market and the professional market is okay. Then you make money, and the more they deal is okay, the more money you make. So that's why I as like compared to statistical arbitrage, it really depends on the market type. If this is like trading within a region, then then you do some stuff. If this is not like like the uh, for example the volatility contract and then expand, then then you do other stuff. But for Arbitrage, like like risk free arbitrage, then you, you don't care. Yeah. Uh, for arbitrage, you mean like you convert the currency to multiple different currency coins, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that that's called relative value. This that means you compare four or five assets. Like you have some sort of ratio. Say for example, uh, uh, Ethereum is always uh one tenth of Bitcoin price. Then if sometimes it's drop, then you you start trading. That that's called relative value. Yeah, but what what I'm talking about uh. It's just Bitcoin to Bitcoin arbitrage. Like big Bitcoin spot to Bitcoin perpetual. There's two market currently trading on on Bitcoin on Bybit. Do you do across exchange Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, you can do that, you can do that. Uh, then uh, you there's you add additional complexity. Yeah, especially on the perpetual side because different exchange offer different perpetual uh, funding rate. Uh, the the structure is different. Uh, the ticket size is different. Per tick difference is different. So you have to do a lot more work. But of course, uh, a lot more work. That means you can make more money. Uh. Yeah. So how do you want to aggregate? So you say you have a certain number of users, and then you want to aggregate all the different changes better than you have the algorithm to do the track feeder mapping. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So let's see. Yeah. Three exchanges, so you need to optimize for the three exchanges in terms of hardware also, so that so that you you actually optimize your. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right now, for example, uh, since uh Binance and FTX is in Tokyo right now, so you, you basically if you set up then you do this two exchanges and you don't have to do any additional stuff. If you add Bybit in, then the problem become uh. Two, two yeah, areas. yeah, and where, where should you put the server? Should you put it in Hong Kong? Should you put it in somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. And, and then after you set up, then okay, big match pop up in Europe, and then you start yeah. to think, oh, yeah. uh, should we put it in Dubai or should we put it in some? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, then I guess if no more questions, then we can conclude this section. This is one because I'm really not familiar with Rust. Uh, uh, yeah. is, is it universally acceptable to go with all platforms or is it just a certain platforms that can actually use Rust What do you mean by platform? Uh, uh, or or exchanges. Exchanges. Yeah, actually, every time we use the examples that we're using is just with my business. Yeah, you can do it with Binance. Just find their API doll and change up here. I just use Conf to write standard value. Yeah. I mean, and also another thing is that um, I'm more primarily uh, a trader on, on the 
responses that are uh, pretty low. And uh, this, I think this, is that this actually, can we also apply this in the, the, uh, the, the smart market area as well as the... Uh, you mean the Chinese market? Yeah, I think you can, but the thing is, the cost you're paying is much higher because the data feed in chat social finance, they, they charge a lot. And, and the latency you get, uh, you have to pay really high amount of money per... It's, it's a different... Yeah, it's a different game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for example, like uh, jump trading, they, they run their own cost, cost uh, Atlantic Fiber. In, in, like, like that, but this kind of infrastructure, you cannot compete. Like, like in, in my opinion, unless you get a better algo, then you are not competing in the in the time regime. You are competing in other trading algo. Yeah, yeah. So in some sense, that once you optimize your hardware, in some sense, you, one of the other way of where you expand the scope of the hardware. So is it time? How you how you balancing between optimizing the hardware and optimizing the scope? Because I think hardware that is limitation, one point that's less ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So you mean your question is how how we make, draw the line? Uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Uh, just find two people. One is good at optimized hardware. One is good at optimized software, and yeah, let them do the job. Yeah. The software part is more cheap. Yeah. You can do. You can. You don't need to pay too much effort to get out relatively good or fast enough. But if you want to go to extreme, you need to be very good at it. Like the, but the it's the same for hardware. Yeah. But, but the thing is, since everyone is in AWS, the hardware, it doesn't have much uh, option for you. Uh, but th then it becomes kernel to name, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you only do exchanges arbitrage? Do you do like on-chain arbitrage or even maybe? Uh, no, right now, right now, we don't do that. Yeah. 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 Ye
the pot at the arbitrum polycons decay is saying and we are supposed to save the network. So basically, when you enter our this beta, you can just uh, maybe I can change to another account. Oh, this connect. So. So we are using the polygon and network right now. So we can just paste an order. And we don't need to you to deposit it to the account at the, at the wallet. You can just enter our uh, reps and post your order directly. And you will transfer your balance from your, for example, like the MetaMask account and directly to our exchange. Then you will get a match here. And the most important thing for our dev is we, can, we support the cross-chain solution. So you can just change to other network and you will use the same address to do your trading. The network is not here, so you will got the same thing, then you can do the, uh, you can share your position, your orders cross-chain. So you can still see the, the, uh, the position here. And, Okay, cross chain really yeah, so basically it's supposed to cross chain and we, you can change any chain you want. And you can, we are suggest you can pay around and to get the test token, the some gas from the four set here. So our four set link is the four set hyphen beta dot sat dot is. So yeah. Is this the potential or is it? Yeah, we only support the professional now, but yeah. we will support the spot later. Yeah, probably around Q1 next year, we'll add. Cool, so uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you for coming. Uh, if you guys stay behind for now, uh, we can check more uh, other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you.